and thank you so much for joining the Nordic People Analytics Summit. I hope you had a great time so far and that you are excited for my, uh, my topic here, right here that I want to talk about today, which is listen, understand and act. Powerful impact of asking. And the reason why I chose this topic is because asking questions and asking in general is so fundamental when it comes to research or just living itself. So we humans tend to ask questions about our environment, stuff that it surrounds us. And that is where we try to get an understanding of what is going on. So we do some observations, we do some uh, data collection based on that question. And usually that ends up with us acting upon it. it ends up that we either uh, find something based on that question and we do something about it, or we can go back and change the question and get new insights. And this also applies for organizations, and especially when it comes to employee engagement, because that is usually done by asking. We're having maybe an annual engagement survey where we collect data and see how our employees. And that is kind of where we are going to orient uh, ourselves within this session. So when we talk about employee engagement, it has received a lot of attention from uh, the research literature as well as uh, from business and organizations. And the reason for that is that we know now that engaged employees are more committed to their work and they are more productive. So naturally, we want engaged employees. This is widely acknowledged. Yet, we see that organizations today struggle to actually leverage the insights that they get from those type of annual engagement surveys. They actually, act, they actually lack the capability of act upon that insights that they have gathered. So why do they do this? Why is it that organizations struggle uh, and what's getting in their way. So that's what I want to discover. And just for a brief introduction, my name is uh, Benedict Brunwald. I'm a solution consultant for SAP SuccessFactors. I've been working within uh, HR and uh, with the, within the software, uh, software space for about three years now. And but my from my background, I have organizational psychology, I have HR, and and um, and basically my interest for HR has reached back since I was sixteen, I guess, uh, when we were starting our own organization as a school project, and I really fancied the, the the way we think and the way we act within our organization. So kind of organizational psychology has always been close to my heart. Uh, and, and I'm really happy to explore this topic. But long before I even considered studying HR and business uh, in general, um, my grandpa at this picture right here, he brought us when I was very young, very young, maybe if, I think we were maybe four years old. He brought us into uh, our family business on the west coast of Norway, where we uh, where he was the CEO and he uh, was in charge of this company, family business that produced thrusters and steering mechanisms for uh, large vessels. And once we joined that tour, he would like show us everything. He would show us like, and he would know everything. And I would say that those bits and pieces are brought through that door, assembled at this a particular machine and these people are in charge and they are painted in that area and we were walking around and I had big eyes right and and he always had this huge enthusiasm he walked around and talked to every single one uh, and it could take hours uh, just by doing that tour because he was knowing so many people and then he always I think every single time we ended that tour he always ended up uh, saying, always listen to the craftsman. And, and once he said that, listen to the craftsman and then understand their feelings and, and understand their ideas and, and concerns and appreciate those ideas and then act upon them, that brings engagement. He always said that. And, and I was 
once I've been brought into the, the world of business and, and HR, I actually realized how far ahead he was. And he was actually going around and talking to every single one and getting their feedback and, and innovate on that. He, he was 100% sure that that, co that that company was more innovative just because they and police were, uh, were asked to speak up. Yet, being just a kid back then, I didn't really understand the impact. And but because it, it, it seems quite it seems quite general, right? It seems almost like common sense, like, yeah, uh, listen to your employees and they are engaged, etc. And you will perform that it makes sense. And I think it resonates very well with, with a lot of leaders today and managers. However, we still struggle to, 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 to act upon this. And indeed, literature shows that, that employees who feel that they can speak up and feel that their ideas and, and feedback is recognized and acted upon, they are actually even more engaged. So there is something about collecting that information and it gives them high level of commitment and contribution to their work. Consequently, many organizations invest heavily into their annual engagement survey. And this is often driven by HR, but this one time adrenaline shot type of survey, it only kind of brings the like intention of, or, or at least gives some answers on are our employees happy and are they committed to our work? But it kind of falls too short when it comes to that deep understanding of why. Why are employees feeling, having these feelings and emotions? And it's all, often a bit too narrow. It's, it's only on that focus. And in addition, we also often lack that type. It, it, it is mostly on the surface. So we, we lack that type of insight to really get deep into what type of actions can we actually take with this and who who should be responsible is it is it something that hr can do or is it actually something that managers can do themselves in this regard i would like to to go back to this quote that you have right here always listen to the craftsman always isn't just one time right always is it's frequent. It is often, right? You, so what I want is that we, we broaden our vision. We talk about employee experience. Employee experience is much more than employee engagement. Employee engagement is a part of employee experience, but employee experience is that on the moments that matter throughout a work life cycle. So it is your onboarding. It is your uh, first day at work. It is your uh, talk with your manager. It is your performance review. It is your when you get your first child and you need to go on uh, parental leave. All those touch points, and even uh, when you leave the company, all those touch points we want to include. So, so employee engagement is absolutely something that we should care about. But employee experience widens it up, and it kind of take into account also those institutional and, and uh, organizational processes that we have today. That where we can identify the moments that actually matter for overall engagement, because employee engagement is ultimately what we need and what we want. But employee ex experience is kind of the way where we can get that type of insights, because that's where we can map out from when you enter the company until you exit how, com how engaged are you throughout that life cycle? And don't get me wrong, em and the annual employee engagement survey is, is still super relevant, but it's by complementing that annual engagement survey with that type of in-moment feedback that you receive out through the and we can do that now with technology. We have technology that enable us actually map out that, kind of, that, that life cycle and correlate 
it with your annual engagement. With technology, we can now bring real-time insights into managers so that they can actually see and get proactively uh, insights into what to do, what actions to, to make, how can they become better managers. And the same for HR. Take onboarding, for instance. We know for a fact that a good onboarding process or onboarding experience give our engagement we make sure that we retain our employees for a longer period of time and we know that they perform uh, better and more uh, or and quicker into our organization however in my observations at least i would say that this is maybe one of those under, most underrated uh, and underestimated uh, processes within the whole of hr life cycle and the reason for that is because you have a lot of uh, people involved. You have many instances involved. So wouldn't it be nice then to actually be able to ask questions to the employee once they are getting on board so that we can ask them, did you get your key card? Did you feel engaged? Did you feel welcomed? And all of those small touch points and, and put that up to your, for example, annual engagement survey or your engagement pulse survey. And having these insights will benefit everyone. Managers can kind of get a, 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 a suited feeling whether he is doing a good job as a manager or doing his, his task correctly and that his, his intentions are being experienced the way he, he wanted to be. And HR can get a process overview. They can understand whether the, and facilitate for, um, for better processes, onboarding processes. And employees uh, themselves, they feel that they can give the feedback. And once managers and HR are enabled to understand and, and, and get recommendations on, on actions that they need to make, then the, the employees actually are feeling that, yes, the stuff from the very start, my feedback actually matter. And it's not that I, organizations haven't tried to do this today. Uh, naturally, many have, tried, have, have, done, have done this and done it successfully. But the thing is that it's, it's a very time-consuming and tedious process, which often also includes errors and, and, and information that doesn't really matter. Uh, it doesn't really apply to the overall engagement. Yes, we see that we, uh, some employees really would like some training at the beginning but does it really influence the overall engagement at the end does it really have any impact that's the key source that we we want to dig into and let's address the big elephant in the room really do we need more surveys what about survey fatigue it's a huge problem we get surveys all the time and and trust me i get it i get it i i shop online I receive those emails all the time. I get them in my email. I see them. I never click on them. I never answer them. But now with technology, we can think differently when it comes to our employee listening program. Just think about it. Just think about it. You're, you're, when you're riding a Uber, at least I always rate my Uber driver. I always give, provide feedback, and I always provide also feedback on my experience. Why? Because it pops up in the, in the action, in the flow of work or flow of action. I'm done with my Uber, um, Uber ride. I rate it. It pops up immediately. I, I can't proceed, for example. And the same goes for Airbnb. I always rate my Airbnb hosts. And that's where we kind of get into that institutional and structural way on how we do employee listening, which kind of changed the game. I'm not saying that we're going to, uh, employees going to write their organization and, and the, um, um, or their employer and their employer going to write the employees. I'm not saying that it's going to be like locked in that way and you're having this type of stars, but it's something about changing that the way we're, we're, we're um, we're having this listening programs. Just, just picture you're, you're, you're watching Netflix, for example, you're watching Netflix and, and as you, you're uh, done with the movie, you're asked to rate it. And now people actually know that if I gave this, if I like this movie, 
I know for a fact that Netflix will recommend uh, recommend some some movies that I I, I will uh, that is similar. So it's it is it is being more personalized and tailored towards me. So that also gives me an incentive to actually give some rating. So through artificial intelligence, we actually get feedback, uh, and, and but we can give, provide something back. So let's put this into a work context, uh, context, like for an employee. Picture that I'm I'm just done with my annual performance review with my manager, and as I sign that within my uh, HR system, I get immediately a, a within the window, no, no no email afterwards, but in the window I get asked for my experience, my feedback, my thoughts about the manager, was he fair, and. It's, it just falls in naturally in the work of flow and it just makes the survey much more accessible. Or the other way around, or, or another perspective. Think about uh, if I'm going in and I explore my career opportunities, explore my career opportunities, and along the way I'm being asked, so what's, what's your interest? What do you like? Well, I like engineering, I like HR, I like software. So I, I tick those boxes off. Because I know then that the organization will, uh, or, or the, the solution will provide me with career opportunities that fit me. But then you can incorporate that with some feedback. So how do you, so what do you think about our, uh, what's your experience uh, from of, of the career opportunities in our organization? Is it poor, is it bad, or is it brilliant? Because it's in the flow of work. So that's how, we can be more creative with technology now and be more innovative the way we collect feedback. And in that way, we can be much more relevant uh, to our employees and it can be much more personalized and automated. And then you ask me, well, that's a, a lot of data. You collect a lot of data and we spend a lot of time on our annual engagement survey. So how do you expect us to be capable of analyzing all of that touch points throughout the uh, entire employee lifecycle in addition to the annual, uh, uh, annual engagement survey? Well, the fact is that for most, all of this is decentralized. You have one survey for onboarding and then you have one survey for your candidates and then for your annual engagement survey. And then the, all of this is separated on different platforms, technologies, and even maybe the way you collect, process, analyze, and visualize your, um, your data is separate as well. So it's a lot of export and import and, and a lot of administrative tasks just by getting all consolidated, all of that data. Today, you actually have technology that can bring all of this into one single place. That can allow you to have a more holistic employee listening program so that you collect everything at one single platform. Having everything in one single place is very fundamental and, and, and kind of gives you that foundation to start to have that type of holistic program. When I'm saying a holistic employee listening program, it starts to be quite repetitive on that, but and, and a mouthful to, to say, but but once I say that, that, that's where we want, once you have all of that collided into one single platform, it makes it much more easy and you can automate. And by just a click of a button, find those cross journey, through cross journey analytics, find those touch points that actually correlates to your overall engagement. So you can, for example, take that onboarding, see how does that influence and maybe predict for the future. How does that predict uh, future engagement and you can do that at one single place but yet i i know for a fact that there is a lot of stuff still to do yes you can correlate stuff and you can do that one on one platform but it's quite complex so what if you could just by a click of a button could automatically receive recommendations on focus areas so for example by a click of a button you can combine a experience data, which is your feedback, and your operational data, which you often have in your HR solution, such as org hierarchy and organizational belonging, you can, for example, identify that men within a certain age, 
H frame has uh, that has a bad employee uh, onboarding experience are being less engaged within the next two years. You can be that specific with just a click of a button. So let me actually show you how all of this works. And let's start with the cross journey analytics. The example I have right here is from Qualtrics and an experience management platform where we have, for example, here our engagement score within our company overall, which is on 79% and our onboarding score on 66%. We can here see that our 66% on onboarding experience is a bit below uh, our uh, desired level, which is indicated by the yellow color. However, our overall engagement is quite satisfactory. So we can also break this down into operational data, for example, department, which can come from directly from your HR solutions, such as, for example, success factors, where you have, for example, here, the engagement level for finance and onboarding experience for finance. And we can see that in, it is the same trend as our company overall, where we are a bit below when it comes to our onboarding experience. And then I can identify key drivers of engagement kind of regardless of onboarding in this case though but what it, this indicates is basically how we perform on certain items and how it correlates or how important it is for overall engagement score and what we can identify here is that for example that my job is challenging and interesting we are performing below target but at the same time, it is of high importance. So all of these red buttons here, we are, need to focus on in, in order to improve overall engagement. But if I want to relate this specifically on onboarding, which is where we've kind of talked about the cross journey analytics, is where we actually can easily identify, depending kind of where we need to put our effort. And we see here, for example, that this company provides me with the opportunity for learning and development. Very important during the onboarding stage and has a high impact on overall engagement at a later stage. With Qualtrics, we can also take action immediately. It is basically a system of action. So we can here create an action plan based on that. And we can even use this type of heat map and you can see that how you have your operational data coming from your HR solution, where you can actually identify these type of items and in what department we need to improve, especially on. So we can also see that career goals is, of, is quite a bad score, but at the same time, it is not that item that is of most importance. So what you have just seen is how we can combine operational data, experience data, and correlate engagement and onboarding at one single place. I'm going to show you how Qualtrics, an experience management platform, helps people analytics leaders quickly and easily surface how to identify employee experience gaps across the organization and prioritize which ones to tackle. Here is how simple it is. First, you choose the metrics and demographics you really want to understand and improve. Then Automated Insights finds statistically significant insights amongst key employee subgroups. Then you get an easy to follow interactive view, prioritize significant experience gaps for those unique subgroups. Something that would take analysis and admins weeks with multiple tools and now done quickly and with minimal effort. So let's have a look. In this example, you recently run an engagement pulse. And as the people analytics leader, you were asked to pre prepare important insights to share to the executive presentation. Instead of exporting data, run different types of an analysis to bubble up some statistically significant ir uh, irrelative insights to tackle, Qualtrics can quickly and easily perform many of the analysis for you right inside the tool. 
In the right section, simply select the lowest level rated question categories, key driver survey items, and any relevant people demographics. Then Qualtrics Automated Insights will quickly and efficiently point you to the experience gaps that deserves the most attention. Not only can you analyze topics like engagement, but other key metrics as well. Focusing on intent to stay, you immediately find some key insights into employee experience gaps. For example, males in the Americas sales region across many tenure groups have the most significant gaps that you need to address. You also see younger male manufacturing employees in Europe and uh, American saleswomen in the 46 50 age range have significantly lower intent to stay compared to the company overall. You can also see key drivers from measures from, for example, DENI. Here you find the engineering is showing some of the largest experience gaps compared to the company overall. Specifically, in the European region and amongst highly tenured employees, Right here, all of this is generated uh, automatically, giving you the high quality recommendations without having to export data. Automated Insights easily helps you to surface the experience gaps across your organization so that you can act quicker and improve moments that matter the most. So hopefully that gave you some insights on how we actually can change this perspective on how to run our listening, listening programs and how we actually can uh, collect, process and analyze and visualize this type of data and do it very efficiently by leveraging technology. So what's the impact of all of this? Well, first and foremost, I hope that you have seen how we kind of switch from only employee engagement to a more holistic employee experience point of view, where we collect data from more than just one single touch point, but we have several touch points throughout the life cycle and throughout the year in terms of onboarding experience, uh, pulses, annual engagement surveys, exit uh, candidate experience, all those experience and collect them into one and, and then see how does that influence our overall engagement. And then we have the way we change our mindset when it comes to listening in general. So listening in terms of in the moment, when it actually matters for me, when it's relevant. Take, for example, the Uber, or when I uh, complete my performance review, I get that survey right there in the moment and we can be creative on it. And then it is this holistic listening strategy. So we don't lock ourselves into silos, but that we have everything at one single place and that we can actually run these type of stuff at one single place makes it much more easier to process the type of data that we receive. And maybe not lock ourselves just into the mindset of employee experience. What about combining that with customer experience? Because we know that satisfied customers often come from engaged employees. So having that holistic mindset on experience in general, and then having this action-oriented mindset where we listen, we understand, and then we act upon it. And technology can kind of enable us to take action right away and to take action where it actually matters. So I want to kind of bring us back to my grandpa, which sadly isn't with us anymore. Uh, but his legacy lives on, and it's, it was, I was so proud when I saw at a conference with the family business that many of the words that were, he used, listen to the craftsman, have an apprentices, listen to the apprentices, all of that is still within the heart and soul of the company. And we really see the company uh, going to the very next step uh, along their journey. So I hope that you, from now on, will listen, understand, and act upon your employee. So feel free to reach out 
on LinkedIn or, uh, or anything or send me an email and I'm happy to discuss this further with you.